one, we're going to do a full run through. Our camera should be stuck on this. Oh my god! Pilots drive to Lola? Can't they run a car for the pilots and have them drive? No! 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 Oh my god! Oh my god! Good morning, Facebook family and friends. Today it is Monday, it is the 23rd of April. The year is 2018, and I'm back in my kitchen. Behind this door of the laundry room, I'm back there doing laundry. Washing some towels, I've been up here all day cleaning up. And drinking what? Coffee. It is, it's actually late now, it's 12, 12 o'clock. Just ate breakfast. I had some breakfast was from rotisserie chicken. I, I, I ate half a rotisserie chicken and a sweet potato. I'm trying to eat healthy, and I, and I didn't feel, feel like cooking, so I grabbed that rotisserie chicken. Publix has rotisserie chickens on sale for four ninety nine. That chicken was so good. I ate half last night for dinner, the other half for breakfast. I might swing by through there and get another rotisserie chicken. That mess was delicious for four ninety nine. So we just saw that video. Of a cash, a customer who paid cash. I'm not sure you all remember this incident. I'm sure you do, because it was major news where American Airlines uh, customer was forced off the plane to allow American Airline employees to fly to Louisville, Kentucky. They forcibly removed this man. I'll call the police. He was forcibly removed off the plane. He had paid cash for his ticket, or charge, credit card, whatever. He, he had paid for a ticket. And they still want him off the plane, and he had to catch a flight the next day. He had to. He was a doctor. He said he had patients at home. They forced him off the plane. Long story short, the man is now a millionaire. He settled with American Airlines for millions because this was an embarrassment to American Airlines, and they lost over a billion dollars when their stock market tanked behind this whole episode. What could cause us an arrogant? It's how arrogant could employees to be, you're going to get off this plane. You're going to leave this Starbucks restaurant. You're going to leave this store. Customers. There are more videos surfacing of incidents that have taken place at Starbucks where police have been called and they've removed people from Starbucks. I'm sorry to see two, three, I've seen about three, two, three other videos, two, three or four more videos that one was in North Carolina. When a man was forcibly removed by security from Starbucks, he was running his leg. He had purchased a cup of coffee earlier, came back, and was sitting there doing his work. They in turn said they didn't want him to leave. He was like, there's nobody else here but me. It's just that it's, he wasn't harassing anybody. He had brought up some product earlier. If you don't understand what white privilege is, you're going to learn what it is today. White privilege just gives you the, the audacity to do whatever you want to remove customers from stores. To keep people from sitting at a counter during the civil rights movement because we don't want you in there. We don't want you in the Starbucks in 2018 because we just don't want you here. We don't like you sitting here not bothering anyone. That incident that took place in Starbucks in um, um, Philadelphia, the woman who took the video said she comes there all the time and she hadn't even purchased anything that day either. So why was she, why were they targeted and singled out? And she wasn't. She walked in and sat down to her and purchased anything. Racism. That's why. 
But now, if you read the comments that people have to say about these incidents, they don't see it as racist. They see it as the two young men were wrong for leaving the store. They see it as, in fact, not only do they see that the two men were wrong for leaving the store, they also see that young, that the Asian man was wrong for not leaving the airplane when they told him to leave the plane, airplane. And each one of these incidents, including going back to the civil rights movements, when blacks went into restaurants and stores and retail places and stayed and stayed there when they wouldn't even allow, but and made which forced the laws to change. They didn't want them then either. They didn't want them then. Then they don't want us there now. Nothing has changed, right? Or has it? Hard. You, know, you get mixed signals here. I'm, I, you know, I think of some of the incidents that I've had in certain places where. There's a years ago I used to go to this car wash, this gas station where if you wash, get get a tank, you fill up your gas, you purchase gas, you got a free car wash. So I purchased the gas, went inside. The lady was always she'd always speak to me, we were always talking, laughing, and everything. And it was just a little drive through, little car wash, you just not too spectacular. I purchased some gas, and I did something. And I left, and I came back to do my car wash. I can't remember what I did, but I knew I came back. So as I'm coming through the car wash, she's sitting there like, well, are you going to pay for this? And I'm saying, I'm not paying for this, ma'am. I just bought gas. But she, of course, she didn't remember who I was. And I had to remind her, um, ma'am, I was just in there not too long ago, and I purchased some gas. And uh, luckily, I had the receipt sitting right there, and she looked at the receipt. And so I pulled over to the back of the back my car, and she walks off with the receipt and everything. She's coming back. She said, oh, I checked the video. You were in here earlier. I said, yeah, we, we talked. You don't remember me? I guess she didn't remember, because you know, you know the old saying, we all look the same. I was just trying to get a free car wash. You gave me the code to get in the car wash. The code changed every day. That's how I had the code. It was on the receipt. People are crazy. But she did apologize and offered me one of them free sandwiches inside the gas station. I like to start. And you're welcome to have a sandwich and a Coke or something. I said, okay, I'm going to get my sandwich and Coke. Here embarrassing me in front of all these people. I wasn't embarrassed about it because I knew I had, <laughs> knew I had the cold from the receipt she gave me to it. I don't get embarrassed when this type of stuff happens. But it's unfortunate that many people are criticizing those two young men at their Starbucks and saying that they were in the wrong. I've read comment after comment after comment that so any if at any given time, what you all are saying is that no matter what, if you're in Kroger shopping. But your groceries and the whatever, they can come up and tell you to leave. You should just stop what you're doing and leave me. So if anybody tells you, because they, I see where everybody kept writing, the, we have the right to refuse service to anyone. That's not what the Supreme Court says, idiots. Now, keep, please keep in mind that this was a, in a, a, a bakery went all the way to the Supreme Court. Uh, I forget what state it was. They didn't want to serve, make a cake for a gay couple. And they lost their business behind this because they thought we don't have to serve gays. The Supreme Court said, hey, you do, motherfuckers. You do. But that's the world we live in. I don't like gay people, so I don't want to serve. I don't like black people, so I don't want them sitting in my restaurant that you don't own, the manager of Starbucks. I don't like this person because of this and this and that. You don't need to be working in public service if you don't like people because if you if you don't want to deal with certain races of people and are different people um hold on. if you don't like dealing with certain types of people because of whatever reason you don't need to open your business I'll be working for a business that caters to the public. You need a private business. There are a lot of private businesses that I cannot go into. So I'm not a member of this club. I'm not a member of this association. I'm a member of that. I can't walk through the door. So if Starbucks or any of these businesses don't want to cater to certain people, they can always make it private. And you have to buy a membership to be a, a member of this place. And that way you don't have to worry about the riffraff coming in there, taking, need, uh, needlessly taking a table and not purchasing something. Two minutes into them being in that store, this woman called 911. This man on this airline ticket uh, brought a ticket. He's sitting on the flight. All of a sudden, they make an announcement. We need four or five passengers who would agree to give up their seat to for thousand dollars. You got a hundred some odd people in this plane. Two hundred people. Nobody wants to give up their seats. Everybody's trying to go home. They don't want the thousand dollars. 
They've all paid for their seats. So if you're like airline stewards, the airline stewardess decides, well, we're going to pick our victims and make them give up these seats. Well, they met the one, they should have got to the Asian guy who was 67 or 80. He was up there in age. He said, I'm not doing this. He was Rosa Parks in 2017. He said, I'm not giving up this seat. And they forcibly, they called the police, and the police, and the police officers later were fired for this, for what they did, because they should not have intervened in this problem. That was a civil matter, not a criminal matter. And they should have said, okay, we ain't got shit to do with this. Y'all want them off this plane? Take them to court. We out. Bye! Enjoy your flight, sir. But they decide, we're going to take them off the plane, because these white folks are telling us to take them off this plane. They should not have been there. They lost their jobs behind us. This man was paid millions. Wish that had been me, Lord. I couldn't be that man, me being drunk up off that damn plane, screaming and hollering blood everywhere. <sighs> you could have paid a man millions. It was a huge fuck up on their behalf. Just like these men about to get paid millions from Starbucks. Watch. But that again, the young lady who made the decision to call nine one one. She won't be penalized. She gonna scoot on to the next Burger King going by that damn business. Half over at Dunkin' Donuts right now watching the damn uh, bathroom. Now, this for private, private customers, for cash paying customers. Ma'am, you look familiar. Didn't you work at Starbucks? That didn't work out too well over there. You still over here with this bullshit? She's going to move on to the next place and say her same shit. I know how they, I know how they operate. Years and years ago, and racism wasn't necessary. Man. I remember I went into a CVS one night. I had to use the bathroom. And the security guard said the security, the bathrooms were locked. And I said, well, I have to use the bathroom. He was like, well, it's locked right now, so we're not opening up the door. We close an hour. So I said, an hour? I said, okay, what is the problem? He said, well, we locked the doors an hour prior to... This is a black guy. Prior to that, I said, well, I got these bathroom beds. He said, I can't do nothing to you. I walked outside against the side of that building and pissed on the side of that damn building right there with his view. And I came back in and started my shopping. That's how pissed off. That's how angry it was. He didn't say a word. He just looked at me and rolled his eyes. <laughs> I walked right out there doing piss right on the side of that building looking right at him. Because you couldn't let me use the damn bathroom. I went on and got my little shopping stuff. The cashier, she was rolling. She was like, Walter, well, you are crazy. And I said, I have his ass. He could let me use that goddamn bathroom. But he want to protect the bathroom. We don't let people use that. And I, and I even asked her, I said, that? She was like, that's just his policy, honey. That's not the store policy. <laughs> people come up with all kinds of rules and regulations shit. But I pissed outside that damn door. I sure the hell did. Right over there. On in Mon Boulevard at CVS over there. And people driving by, I was standing right there pissing, la 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 la. I didn't give a fuck. And I went on and picked the wood on and did my little shopping. Yeah, I wish that'd be my black ass. It could have loved me off that damn plane. Funny part is every time me and Earl travel and they have those seats available, um, every time we take it, we we just like shit. We really in the restless. We're trying to get to a resort or something. But we've taken those seats, and um, we've taken the the, the um, vouchers for so most of the time. They give you a voucher; you can fly anywhere in the United States. A round trip airline ticket, as they used to do. I don't know what they're doing now. I, really, I, I think since this last incident, they've got much more aggressive with what they offer. But yeah, they were, used to give you a twenty four uh, a round trip airline ticket, and they'll put you on the next flight available out there. Most of the time, when we and Earl would get off the plane, they would quickly put us onto another flight. Um, and we'd fly on, or we'd have to wait. And, but most of the time, it's like an hour later or two or something, we had to particularly wait. So we would always take it. Like, yeah, we'll take it. And you get a, you basically give you a first class ticket. Round two, we'd use that ticket to go other places in the year. So, but I guess in this incident, they didn't find any takers. And in many instances, when me and Earl was on those planes, there were a lot of people just went, you know, we would raise our hands quickly, but nobody else, they'd still be looking for other people for whatever reasons. They wanted these extra these seats, and we would be on the plane or on our way on to get on the plane. Most of the time, this was taken care of in the waiting area before you got on the plane. I've never heard of people getting on the plane and then they're trying to find some volunteers to give up their seats that they paid for. By privilege, that works. They can make a decision at any given time to create rules that are out of the blue. We need a seat. Give it up. They were very arrogant about it. American Airlines was, or was American Airlines, or was it United? I'm sorry, it was United Airlines. I'm sorry, forgive me, American Airlines. 
it was United Airlines that had made this decision. And I had read many times that this was not their first rodeo. They have done this to plenty of times. People never tell people, we, gonna, we will get this seat. you going to give it up. We will make you give up the seat. So I don't fly United. I always fly Delta. But they just question you about whether you're on a buddy pass or not. They don't try to take you out the seat, though. But anyway, this is going to be a little short video because it's raining. Kitty cats and doggy walkies outside. And I got to fold all these clothes I've been washing for the past few days and towels. Take a shower and try to get to this gym and back home before this traffic is so bad because it's raining today and this traffic is going to be a nightmare. When it rains in Atlanta, it should turn, it turn into, whew. in fact, I think I'm just going to go to the gym like not too far from me today and just get it on over and over there so I don't have to deal with this traffic because they say it's going to be raining most of the day. If you like my videos, click like, share them with family members and friends. I love to hear you all's thoughts and opinions on today's subject matter. I'm out of here. Uh, again, it is Monday, April 20, Monday, April 23rd. Monday, April 23rd, the year 2018. I'm out. Enjoy your day.